To preface this video, if you're new to Shovel Knight and think you might want to get into it, you should avoid the standalone releases and just buy the Treasure Trove collection until the issue described in this video is solved. Basically, you're missing out on an entire game in the series unless you buy the full Shovel Knight collection. If you would like to know why you should avoid the standalones like the plague, stick around for the whole video. The creators of Shovel Knight, Yacht Club Games, truly went above and beyond with their 2014 Kickstarter masterpiece and its stretch goals, and over the past seven years have turned Shovel Knight into a gaming icon. The series expanded from just one short game to a behemoth of the indie gaming scene, with five Shovel Knight games already being out, two more in the pipeline, amiibo figures, and countless cameo appearances in huge titles like Super Smash Bros. Despite Shovel Knight's rise to stardom, Yacht Club Games seems to take no issue in seemingly trying to sweep one of their most important projects under the rug in recent years, that being the monumentally important Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows. To understand why Plague of Shadows is so important to Shovel Knight's rise and how Yacht Club Games has been hiding it, we first need to go back to 2013 with the launch of the Shovel Knight Kickstarter. Shovel Knight was a refreshing game when its Kickstarter first launched and essentially single-handedly caused a renaissance in the retro platforming genre. Many new gaming fans, or older ones with short memory spans, are quick to write off the game as derivative or as just another platformer in an oversaturated genre. While it's true that everyone and their mother has seemingly been trying to create a good indie platformer, including me, hypocrite that I am, there truly was a drought in the genre in 2013 when the game was first announced. This drought, and increased demand for games like Shovel Knight, meant that Yacht Club Games not only easily hit their $75,000 goal to get the game funded, but they also gained over $300,000 and hit all of their stretch goals for the game. Hitting this insane stretch goal limit meant that the game would either ship or be patched with a 4-player battle mode and 3 playable boss knights. The fans voted, and Plague Knight, Spectre Knight, and King Knight were chosen to be the playable knights. As we all know, battle mode became the game Shovel Knight Showdown, and all three knights got their own games instead of being merely playable in Shovel Knight. This begs the question of why Yacht Club games would increase their scope by so much and delay the full game's completion until 2020 after many many delays on post-launch content. This is because the stretch goals did not state these knights would be getting their own campaigns, but simply that they would be playable in Shovel Knight, like playing as Zero in the Mega Man X series, or as Richter in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It would just be the same game with a different moveset. This was the approach that Yacht Club Games took when creating Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows at first. Once Yacht Club Games started really thinking about the concept they had on hand, playable Plague Knight turned into something that Shovel Knight fans and experts didn't and still don't know what to call. Is it an alternate story? An expansion? A DLC? A new game? A sequel? It's kind of all of these things, but what it certainly wasn't was playing Shovel Knight, but as a different dude. Only unlocked after beating the main game, Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows was a complete subversion of the previous game's formula with an entirely brand new story, tons of new areas, and a lot of tweaked level design, way more than people give it credit for. It's essentially the Majora's Mask to Shovel Knight's Ocarina of Time, a new game using the same assets. This analogy isn't perfect, but it's really the best comparison we have. Plague used many of the same level layouts and featured a very unique and hard to learn character. So the challenge of the game was mostly, okay, I've seen this room before as Shovel Knight, but now I don't have a pogo and my jump is shorter, but I can jump multiple times and I can do this crazy thing called a bomb burst. How do I burst through this room where I normally pogo? It was meant to be played after the original game, kind of like a different take on New Game Plus, but it told the same events from a different perspective Kind of like in time travel movies when the main characters go back in time and watch themselves do things in third person. So, Kickstarter backers and fans alike, who only spent 10 or $15, were essentially given a sequel and a post-launch update for free. The fact that this massive, almost unprecedented update was free is the most important fact for the full context of Plague of Shadows creation and development that many modern Shovel Knight fans do not give the game any credit for when criticizing it retroactively. Yacht Club Games delivered an update to their $15 indie game that more than doubled its playtime for many for free. The more business-minded viewer may now ask, if Plague of Shadows was free, but it was only playable Boss Knight 1 of 3 they promised and it didn't even come out until 2015, 
How is YCG going to keep making expansions with this large of a scope and keep its doors open? They would essentially be working with the very little actual money coming in for years to provide free content to a game that was well past its time. The issue is what led to the event that I would like to call the Great Rebranding. At this point, Yacht Club Games needed to get their revenue streams up, but they still had to deliver a ton of content for their game that already came out. Sure, they had things like the Amiibo, merch, etc., but they really needed to start making money from game sales again. But this left them in a very tough place. How would they follow up Plague of Shadows twice? They couldn't just deliver on one of gaming's greatest expansions, and then cut corners on the next two. Plus, there was still that battle mode they promised, too. Yacht Club Games delivered what I think was the most ingenious solution to this dilemma they possibly could have. Our scope is too big? Make it bigger. For Spectre Knight, this isn't an alternate story, but an original prequel game with 100% new level design, a new story, the work. Whereas Plague of Shadows was like playing the same game from a totally new perspective, Spectre of Torment would be the Mega Man X to Shovel Knight's Mega Man. Since they would be making an entirely new game, this meant that they could sell the game separately, and rebrand Shovel Knight as a collection of games, not just one. While this idea, on its surface, was one of the biggest brain solutions to such a pressing issue I've seen in the gaming industry, the execution over time has left many fans confused. This decision to make Spectre of Torment its own thing is when Shovel Knight experienced a bit of a name change. Back in 2015, if someone told me they beat Shovel Knight, I know that they defeated the Enchantress, saw the credits, and finished the whole game. Nowadays, when someone tells me I beat Shovel Knight, they could be referring to two different things. How? Because the original game, Shovel Knight, now has two names. The original game where you play as Shovel Knight is now called Shovel Knight, Shovel of Hope. But the full package deal was given a subtitle of its own, Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. And its price for new buyers was raised to $25 but older buyers still got every update for free. Here's where the confusion came into play, though. Firstly, Shovel Knight did not become Treasure Trove at the same time on every platform. This was due to the name change coming alongside the update that would make Spectre of Torment playable, but Spectre of Torment was a timed exclusive for the Nintendo Switch, and it came out as a launch title for the new console. To further add on to the confusion, and many questions the more casual fans would have, like, why is Shovel Knight on my Switch called Treasure Trove, but on PC it's still just Shovel Knight? Are they different games? Is Treasure Trove a sequel? A DLC? What's going on? Spectre of Torment also launched as a $10 standalone game at the same time as Shovel Knight's big rebranding. This decision makes sense on the Switch, a new console, where fans otherwise would have had to spend $25 to buy the whole package just to play the new game. Maybe they're not interested in playing the old ones, again. For example, let's say Jimmy was a Kickstarter backer who got Shovel Knight on his PC at launch day. Jimmy's a diehard PC gamer who wouldn't be caught dead with a console. That is until Nintendo released the Switch, which caught Jimmy's eye due to its hybrid nature and its console quality games in a handheld form factor. Now, Jimmy wants a Switch at launch for Breath of the Wild and gets the bonus cherry on top of getting to play Spectre of Torment early, if he wants. That's when Jimmy realizes, oh no, I bought Shovel Knight on a different platform, because the Switch didn't exist. I already beat the first two campaigns on my PC, and I don't want to buy the game again on a new platform just to play one third of it, especially because they raised the price by 10 bucks. This is when Jimmy decides just to wait a month and play Spectre of Torment when it comes out on his PC for free. In this scenario, Yacht Club Games gets exactly zero dollars from Jimmy, and Jimmy gets a brand new game for free. Obviously, this is a scenario Yacht Club Games wanted to avoid, so they made Spectre of Torment available as a standalone release on the Switch for $10. I personally would call this a good branding decision, since while it generated a bit of confusion, it still meant that Yacht Club Games would, at the end of the day, probably be seeing a lot more revenue from platform double dippers than they otherwise would. However, their next decision with Spectre of Torment's release continues to baffle me to this day. They then decided that the Spectre of Torment standalone release needed to come to other platforms. But why? If someone played Shovel Knight on other platforms, they would be receiving Spectre of Torment for free when its time's exclusivity on Switch ran out. This means that the Spectre of Torment standalone is not really serving its main purpose on platforms other than the Switch. As the owner of the largest and most active Shovel Knight Discord server, 
I had many instances of people asking how they could refund the Spectre of Torment standalone because they didn't realize they didn't need it, despite the disclaimers on the store page, and many instances of people buying the Spectre of Torment standalone who were pissed that they had to buy Spectre of Torment essentially again in Treasure Trove if they wanted to play the other two games. This comes to the main issue. By renaming to Shovel Knight Treasure Trove and Shovel of Hope, they essentially changed Shovel Knight from one game with some DLCs to a collection of standalone games. Why then would they not also release standalone versions of Shovel of Hope and Plague of Shadows on all the platforms? In my opinion, the only platformer just releasing Spectre of Torment standalone made any sense was the Switch. For the people who didn't want to buy the whole game again, just to play the timed exclusive expansion on their new console. By releasing Spectre of Torment on other platforms standalone and not the other games, this meant that Shovel Knight, now a series and not just one game, was a series where you could either buy every game all at once, or just the prequel about an edgy guy with a scythe where the titular character Shovel Knight doesn't even show up. How does it make any sense to only have two options for new fans? Purchase everything, or purchase something that definitely shouldn't be people's first experience with the franchise? If Spectre of Torment came out on its own before the original Shovel of Hope, there'd be no reason for it to be called Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment at all. The name alone means that this is inherently not a standalone experience. Playing Spectre of Torment and only Spectre of Torment without the other games would really be like if someone watched the Star Wars prequels and then just stopped at the prequels with the bad ending where the Emperor wins and the hero has a really shitty day. You can't have a collection of games where only one of those games is available outside of the collection. And Yacht Club Games knows this. They knew this made no sense. Which is why when King of Cards, the fourth game in the series, and Showdown, the fifth game in the series, released and were given standalone releases, Shovel of Hope was also retroactively given a standalone release. Finally, now all of the games in the Shovel Knight series are now available for you to purchase on their own. Or you can buy a big pack of all the games if you'd like, for a now very hefty $40 after the price was raised again from $25. This was a fantastic step forward when it came to reducing consumer confusion, and it would have finally completed Shovel Knight Treasure Trove's rocky transition from being just one game into being a collection of five standalone experiences from the Shovel Knight universe. I say it would have, because when Yacht Club Games finally released Shovel of Hope as a standalone game, ironically back to its original price of 15 bucks too, they did not release a standalone version of Plague of Shadows. This means that currently there are five games in the Shovel Knight series. Four of them are available to purchase on their own, but for one of them you can only buy it if you buy the collection of all five games. This would be like if, back on the 3DS, Capcom released Mega Man Legacy Collection first, then released Mega Man 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6 as standalone games for cheaper than the collection, but they made Mega Man 2 exclusive into the collection. No one in the gaming world would tolerate this. But because most people who care already bought and played Shovel Knight Treasure Trove instead of the poorly thought out and confusing standalone releases, most people didn't experience any issues here. There was no stink made in the gaming media, no complainers on forums, no angry YouTube reviewers making rant videos about it, begging Yacht Club Games to hashtag Free Plague Knight or whatever. Since their release strategy has been so confusing since the beginning, more confusion really just got ignored. Just because there was no public PR fiasco about Plague of Shadows not getting its standalone release, doesn't mean that people haven't gotten screwed over by this before. At least five times have I seen new players come into my previously mentioned Discord server and ask, how do I play Plague of Shadows? I played Shovel of Hope, I played Spectre of Torment, King of Cards, and Showdown, but now I want Plague Knight and I can't find it in the store. What do I do? And our only response is, buy Treasure Trove or miss out. Sorry. Treasure Trove is $40. While most players wouldn't be paying the full $40 due to a discount if you already have one or more of the standalones, why should a player have to buy a collection of four games they already own just to play a fit? Especially, what if a player played the standalone games on different platforms because they played them over a long period of time? For example, Jimmy has just replayed all the games in Treasure Trove again, and he tells his little brother Timmy about this great series called Shovel Knight. Timmy decides to go give it a try, but he's not so sure if he'd like it enough to play all five games, so he started with the Shovel of Hope standalone, then he buys Spectre of Torment, King of Cards, and finally Showdown. 
Then he realizes he's missed a game, and for some really strange reason, he needs to go back and buy the whole collection to play the one that he's missed. This is bad enough, but it should be at least a little bit okay, because there's allegedly a discount provided when you buy one or more of the products in the treasure trove, and then you go back and buy the treasure trove. I say allegedly for two reasons. One, because I bought Treasure Trove every time I bought the game, so I've never personally witnessed this discount. Secondly, because this person on screen played the series through the standalones and claims to have dropped 40 just to play Plague of Shadows. Note how this fan also has a Plague Knight profile picture and claims Plague of Shadows was his favorite game in the series, despite having no reason to pay $40 for it. Even if the discount worked as it was supposed to, what if Timmy, a new fan, decided to buy the first game he played in the series on his Switch, but then he got a shiny new PC and played the next three on his PC? In a universe where the discount works properly, if a new fan were to play the games across multiple platforms, they're still screwed out of the discount and have to shell out $40 just to play Plague of Shadows. This may sound incredibly aggravating, but to add on to Yacht Club Games' current state of consumer confusion and overall branding nightmare, there's guides all over the internet from 2015, or Pre-Spectre of Torment, telling people how to unlock Plague Knight, either with a now non-existent cheat code or by beating the original campaign. These guides now no longer work in any case, because that version of the game where the cheat did work later became Treasure Trove, which, upon being updated, made it so that all of the Knight's campaigns were available from the start, due to its shift to being a collection. It wouldn't make any sense if Mario 3D All-Stars forced you to beat Mario 64 before playing the other two games in the collection. But, there's still a version of the game, the Shovel of Hope standalone, where Plague Knight is not selectable from the beginning. I've seen unsuspecting fans ask, well, how do I unlock Plague Knight? This guide says beat the game or do the cheat, and neither of those things worked because, you know, they're following an old guide. What if someone makes the decision to play the standalone games over buying Treasure Trove because they thought Plague of Shadows was included with Shovel of Hope? Those consumers are now also screwed over, and have to spend $40 on a new copy of Treasure Trove to play one game. If you're confused by all this branding history, that's completely okay, because it's ridiculously confusing. Little Timmy isn't going to be able to follow all of this crazy logic because he's got a guide from 2015 telling him to use a cheat code that doesn't work, and he has to convince mom to give him 40 bucks for a game he already owns. When asked about all of this, like in streams, Yacht Club Games usually says something along the lines of, it's not a standalone experience, so it's not getting a standalone release. While I would agree it would be a very weird experience for a new player to play Plague of Shadows first, wouldn't it be equally as weird for a new player to play King of Cards first? There's no Shovel Knight in that game either until the very end. If the Plague standalone is not out yet, but they plan to and are just busy with other things, fine. But get it out ASAP so people aren't screwed over anymore, and allow the people who paid extra for things they shouldn't have to contact you and rectify the situation. If the Plague standalone was never planned to be released, ever, then the message being sent by Yacht Club Games here is pretty clear. They don't think Plague of Shadows is worth playing. What I'll ask is, why? There's a reason I went into how revolutionary and amazing Plague was earlier in the video. It's one of the most unique games I've ever played, my favorite game of all time, and the game that brought me to speedrunning. It's the game that made myself and countless others fall in love with the Shovel Knight universe in the first place, since it was a much more unique game than the original, that did a much better job showing off Yacht Club Games' excellent and witty writing and world building. It's many people's favorite campaign for a reason. In my server, we did a bracket poll where everyone voted for their favorite characters in the series. While Shovel Knight and King Knight both lost pretty early, with King Knight even losing round one to his own mother, Plague Knight and Specter Knight made it close to the final round, but Plague Knight even managed to come out on top. The only reason he didn't cleanly sweep the bracket was because of an intra-server campaign to make it so Propeller Rat beat all the campaign knights, because it would have been boring for them to win. If it wasn't for the newfound support for the Flying Rodent, Plague Knight would have won the whole poll. While Plague of Shadows may be of, quote, lesser quality than the two campaigns that came after it from an objective standpoint, can you really blame it? Many newer fans do not give this wonderful game the credit it deserves because they don't know the context of its creation, or they just don't consider it when criticizing it, 
but it's stunning to me that Yacht Club seems to be ashamed of one of their greatest achievements. Yacht Club Games' branding confusion is definitely not meant to be anti-consumer, because they're one of the most pro-consumer gaming companies ever. I genuinely believe that Yacht Club Games has created this issue by accident. I don't blame anyone at Yacht Club Games for the confusing results of their releases, but I do believe that there's an issue that needs to be resolved, and that it can be resolved easily. To rectify this, Plague of Shadows should either get a standalone release, it should be added as DLC available for purchase under Shovel of Hope's standalone release, or it should be added to Shovel of Hope for free and available to play after you beat the game, or preferably with the old cheat, so that people aren't confused by those old guides. Hashtag free plague night. If you've watched this far, thank you. I know this stuff can be confusing even for Shovel Knight fans. I even got a bit lost while tracking the series of release history while writing this video script, despite being a fan since I was a middle schooler in 2014. Time sure does fly, huh? I'm sorry for my lack of uploads as well, life has just been really crazy since I last posted. Think back to how much different your life was in December 2019 versus right now. Crazy, right? Anyways, be sure to subscribe and all that stuff if you want to see my future videos since I plan to be posting semi-regularly again. Thanks again for watching.